will years I spend in vanity and pride will carry not on the truth if I will know and die was for me he died on
Heavenly Father, we come today in the name of Jesus. We thank you again, dear Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. And Lord, I believe in your God for our great outpouring of your Spirit. I believe in your Lord for souls to be saved. I believe in for souls to be healed. Lord, we just come to worship you this morning. We come to praise you this morning. We come to love you this morning, dear God.
Yes, Jesus, just a mention of your name. His flowers grow, the desert blooms again.
this train fills the temple. Yes, come on. I see the Lord. Oh, 
and touch the cold to my lips. Yes, you did. Oh, oh, oh. 
chapter 3 and I want to read three verses verse 1 2 and 3 this morning I heard brother Benito preach half of my message and over on the left side of me I heard brother Bond speaking my message so I know that it's a confirmation 1 Samuel chapter 3. Got your Bible? Read verses 1 through 3 with me. The Bible reads, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open issue. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere, the, and ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. Amen. Heavenly Father, I ask you this morning, dear God, that you help us Help us to understand what you have for us this morning, dear Lord. I give you all praise. Yes. I give you all glory. I thank you, dear Lord, for the sweet spirit that we feel here today. And God, open up our spiritual minds this morning, dear Lord, to receive what you have for us. 
And Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. And everybody say amen. amen. And amen. We are born again Christians, believers. And we as Christians are to be a light set on a hill that shows forth the love of God to the lost souls out amen. there today. We must learn from Eli, Hophni, and Phineas yeah. how not to lose that light. Amen. I want to talk to you and I this morning on lamps without light. I say lamps without light. As we read here in the, the first three verses of 1 Samuel chapter 3, we read up here that the, the lamp of the Lord had went out. Lord, the God's presence was precious. Even though of all of us that live around the house of God, that does come to the house of God, and are counted as the, party, the, the part of the body of Christ, must be, we must be vigilant to not allow the precious of God and the sacred things of God to become too common and to become meaningless. Amen? Amen. Yeah. God will not spare, listen to me this morning, God will not spare those who pursue upon Him, nor will He spare those who are never taught proper reverence for the house of God. Everybody thinks if they go to church, God will honor that. Amen. Yes, we ought to go to the house of God. Yeah. Not forgetting to assemble ourselves together as we see the day approaching. Church, we're living in that day today. Amen. But people today are too relaxed. Oh. Come on. They're too relaxed thinking that everything's all right. But I want to show you something in the Word of God today. You better check your own soul. Yes. Amen. Amen. Take inventory. Eli, as we read here, Eli was a judge in Israel. He was a Levite. He was the great high priest of, the, of Israel whose duty was to oversee the events and the sacrifices in the tabernacle and to bring into the Holy of Holies once each year to offer sacrifice uh, for all of Israel. For many years, Eli had been faithful as the high priest. He had two sons, Hophni and Phineas, who were reared around the, the tabernacle. They were, they were always at the tabernacle and they learned the duties that the, they were to inherit the priest, uh, uh, the priest of Israel. They were to inherit that position as it came due to them. They were of the tribe of Levi yeah. whom God had ordained to serve Him and the people. And they were separated and dedicated into the service of the Lord God and all the ceremonies of the temple. They were always there, part of it. Yes. Hophni and Phineas experienced the, the sacrificial way of the, of the morning and the evening sacrifices. They were a part of that. They saw it personally. And, and the tabernacle, they were there all the time. They saw and they understood the importance yes. of the ceremony cleansing that must take place before the high priest could offer the blood of the spotless lamb of, uh, of, of the lamb on that day of atonement when their father Eli would enter into the Holy of Holies and into the very presence of God. Before the mercy seat and upon the Ark of the Covenant, they would be a part of that every day, morning and night. Yes. And God had laid out in detail the specifics of how the work of the temple was to be done and what each of the priests of the temple were to do so that there would be no mistakes 
If Israel were to be blessed by God, these priests must perform their duties faithfully yes. and completely. Through their childhood, even through the teen years, Hophni and Phineas had watched and they had learned. They knew every gesture, every expression, every correct prayer, everything required to give their service as priests the proper ceremony appearance. They had it down to detail, Brother Bob. They watched and they learned how to do it. But the work of the temple and the presence of God became too common. Yeah. Are you hearing me this morning? It became a too common place to them and they were not careful to give their duties proper, proper reverence. Yeah. They became lax. Oh, come on, Christians. Come on. They became lax in their commitment. They became they, they, they became lazy. You know who the laziest people are? Christians. Huh? Well, let the pastor do it. Let the pastor mow the yard. Guess what? I do. Because I know what he's done. Huh? We get relaxed in our duties. Come on. That's why I don't. I love you. That's why I don't ask you to do anything. Because I don't want you to complain. Come on. Phineas then became, they knew every detail. But they became relaxed. They came of their duties. Well, I don't have to do it today. We'll, we'll, we'll do it tomorrow. Tomorrow may never come. Right. <clears throat> come on. I'm going to go home with us. I've been gone a week. I went up to higher ground. I got closer to God. Bless God. Praise <laughs> God, brother. They became, became relaxed. They became lazy in their assignment duties before God. They allowed their consecration to slip. And they were no longer even loved. They, they no longer even loved the Lord the God. Huh? These two men are described in a strong statement. A strong statement of condemnation is found. 1 Samuel 2 and 12 says, Now the sons of Eli were son, sons of Belial. Yes. Belial is Satan, the devil. Amen. They knew not the Lord. Come on, you can go to church. Church, listen to me. I love you this morning, yes. but I'm concerned about people's souls. Yes. We were talking about it first and that if I got to wrap my arm around you and say, brother, I need to have a talk with you. I need to tell you something. I feel my spirit. You're going down the road path. I will do it. Because oh, I'm concerned about your soul. Yes. You can go to church for all your life yes. and have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Yes. And my wife has to go up to one of you sisters and wrap her arm around you and say, Sissy, I need to talk to you. She will. Amen. Huh? Why? Because we're not building a church for Pastor Gerald. We're building for God. And I'm concerned about souls. Amen. Souls are slipping in hell every day. And it's our responsibility and duty men and women of God to speak out the truth. And tell it. See, these two sons knew everything. Were raised in it. They were at church every, every service. But all of a sudden, we got relaxed. Yep. Now is not time to put down our guard. Amen. 
Amen. Now's the time to get stronger. Now's the time to get more bolder. Amen. Now's the time to say, Amen, God before me. Who can be against me? Amen. It's time to speak up, church. Yeah. Yes, amen. There's too many lamps in the church today without lights. Wow. Huh? What a terrible thing it is to be brought up as a child around the things of God. What a terrible thing it is to go to church every Sunday, every time the doors are open, learning to make the appearance of being a Christian. Pretending that all things are right and still be considered by God as a son of the devil. Come on. Come on. Oh, you get quiet over now. Huh? Going to church every day. Giving a little bit in the offering. Praising God. But then still stand before God and Say, depart from me, for I never knew you. Yeah. That's going to be the way it's going to be. Because the Bible says everybody that says the Lord, the Lord, is not going to enter into heaven either. Right. Right. Come on, church. What you do now, you better do it on this side of the grave. Yes. Huh? You better get your light back in your lamp. Amen. Come on. You better get it in there and let it burn bright. Yes. Amen. I don't know about you, but oh, I tell you, God's been chasing Sister Angel and I down so much with His blessings. He's overtaking us. I don't know how to take it sometimes. All I got to do is just throw my hands up and say, Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Keep on praying, Lord. Lord. I may not have two nickels and rub together, Seth, but I got it. I'm rich today because I'm laying up treasures in heaven. When the people, the mob, and the rest can't get to it. He said, My blessings will chase you down. Huh? Well, why ain't I getting blessed? Well, won't you just stop for a while and let the blessings catch up with you? You're trying to outrun them. Huh? He said, you've done all you can do, Steve, steal. Mm -hmm. Amen? And watch God move. Huh? These young men, these two brothers, along with their father, have become lamps without lights. Yeah. <laughs> Even Eli, the high priest, he had also became lax in his own commitment. To God and had allowed his sons to continue to serve in the tabernacle as priests, knowing that they were living in the wickedness of sin. Huh? Shame on Eli for allowing his sons to do that, knowing that they were living in sin. Are you hearing me today, church? Come on. I was asked here a while back. <coughs> As your pastor, i got to keep my guard up. I was asked here a while back, would you mind some Sunday morning I give you a call and say we got a group that would like to come and sing at your church. Would you allow them to come? And I said, no. What do you mean, no? I said, what well, part of no don't you understand? The end or the no? No. And they didn't like it. Well, why can't they? I said, I don't allow just anybody Amen. on that platform. Amen. Well, they're Christians. I said, how do I know that? Mm -hmm. Well, they are. I said, I'll tell you what. You send me a tape, DVD or something. Let me see it. Then I'll, I'll think about it and pray about it. I haven't heard nothing yet. I keep checking the mail. There's nothing in there. Must not have been that important. Huh? 
Eli was going to let his sons continue when they were in sin. Huh? Come on. I'm just not going to allow anybody up on the platform. Are you hearing me this morning? Huh? There's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of lamps come in, but they ain't got no lights in them. Are you hearing me this morning? I love you. I haven't given you my opening yet. No, it's five till twelve. One of the greatest problems in, we face in our churches today is that too many parents believe that their children are saved just because they hang around God's house and God's people. Just because our children are, are familiar with the ways of Christianity does it not make them a Christian. Huh? Even my mom and dad were very close. My mom was so close to God that when she died, she looked up to heaven and said, God, if you're not going to heal me, take me home. And God took her last breath out of her. She was that close to God. Does it mean that I was saved? Yeah. I was going to heaven. I had the power. That same power. Amen. God does not have any grandchildren. Come on. Come on. Amen. Amen. God doesn't have any grandchildren. We are the child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We must not allow Satan to deceive us into believing that our youth and children are saved when they have never accepted Jesus Christ coming by the way of the cross of Calvary. We must teach them that you've got to ask for repentance. Huh? Amen. Come on! And I take my children to church every day. Good, you want a Bucky Beaver badge? But you gotta tell them you gotta repent. Yeah. You gotta accept Jesus Christ Amen. and your Lord and Savior. I've said this many different times, so please forgive me for repeating it. When my mom and dad, when my mom died, I went through a real deep depression. I even had to get and take time off of work because. Her and I were so close together. I was the youngest child out of five of us boys. We had, there was eight of us kids in our family. And God spoke to me. He said, son, you can't rely on mama's prayers no more. You've got to start doing your own praying. Amen. Amen. Because I always called mama up when things were going wrong. And said, mama, and she already knew it. Amen. Huh? She knew what I was told about. Because she had a connection with God. Every one of us must answer for his or her own life. We cannot enter, enter hanging on the experiences of mom, dad, or grandma, or grandpa, or anyone else. That's what sin will do for a man, a woman of God. If we allow sin to remain, our spiritual sights are blinded slowly, but surely until there becomes a day that we can no longer see that sin. Amen. Because we are allowing it, and it's over and over. Come on, church. God help us. Our Excuse me, our desire for God is gone. Our commitment and dedication to Him is almost non existent. Wow. If we allow the sin to blind our eyes, yeah. even the great high priest of Israel became a lamp without light. Yeah. Even though there were all, will always be those who live like Eli and his sons disregarding and being 
irreverent to the presence of God and sacredness of God's house, not thinking of the judgment that is sure to come for sin. Yes. There will still always be those who will carry on the true work of God. Amen. Amen. There is still, come on, the elect that God has that will stand in the gap and bang up the heads and will yes. preach the word and tell the world that you need Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Huh? But there's those that still go and sit in pews day after day after day because the man or the woman behind the pulpit is not telling them you must ask for forgiveness. Amen. Repent of your sins. Yep. And people are continuing sinning not realizing Judgment will come. Yep, come on. Huh? Oh, I, I think I can get away with this one. Go for it. There's too many Christians playing Russian roulette. Come on. Thinking that, oh, this one's going to get by. I'll get by with this one. No. No. God, don't work that way, church. Amen. The devil wants to convince us that, oh, God's a loving God. Yes, He is a loving God. He's a merciful God. Yes, He is a merciful God. His grace is new every day. His mercy is new every day. Come on. I believe it. I'm a strong believer of that. But I know He's a God of judgment too. Yes. He's a God of wrath. Yes. Huh? Oh, let me finish. Let me finish. i got to hurry. Oh, Lord. Young Samuel. He grew up around the same environment as Hophni and Phineas. And he too was reared in the work of the priesthood, Samuel was, in the tabernacle. Samuel's love of God and commitment to do all things right never faded with time. In other words, he didn't get relaxed. He didn't get lazy. Amen. And his relationship with God became stronger because of that commitment. Come on. When you sell out to God, there's a price to pay. When you sell out to God, it's going to get easier. Come on, church. It isn't the environment or the circumstances that determine our final destiny. It's our own personal commitment and our own personal dedication and a right attitude that makes the difference. Yes. Well, I got to get up this morning and go to church. I want to just stay home. Yeah. Don't break your attitude here. Yeah. Huh? Come on, church. I love you this morning. On, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Sunday morning I was praying, God, pour your anointing upon Brother Bob. Put your anointing upon yeah. the singers. I would love to be there with them, but I've got a job to do down, down here. Yeah. Put your anointing on them. Come on, I was praying for you guys. I was lifting you up. Say, Lord, bless them this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Huh? Bless God. To put it another way, It's not your aptitude, but your attitude mm -hmm. that determines your altitude. Right. Say that real fast. Amen. <laughs> For Samuel 3 and 3 says, And ere the lamp of God went out of the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. This was the final blow. To insult the duties of the priesthood that God had appointed to Eli and his sons. The lamp we call the golden candlestick was located within the tabernacle and it was to remain trim, yes. full of oil, lighted at all times as long as the tabernacle was standing. It was to be a perpetual light as a type and shadow of the light of the world, which is Jesus Christ. Yes. Who was to come as the Messiah of Israel, the Savior of the world. The light of the golden candlestick
candlestick was given off from a wick that fed from a reserve of olive oil in the stem. It was the priest's duties to keep that lamb trim and burning full of oil so that the light would never fail. In the life of a Christian, that's us. We are instructed by God to keep our lamps all trimmed. Amen. And burning, that means that we are to be vigilant to keep our heart right with God and to allow the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon us. At least we become lamps, or at least we will become lamps without light. I can't give you the anointing as our brother said earlier. I can't give you the healing. But we know one who can. Yeah. We can teach you. God can do it. Yeah. God can do it. Yes. Amen. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 14 and 16. He said, ye are the light of the world. Huh? A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men put light a candle put it under a bushel. Oh, that's something a lot of Christians are doing that today. Yeah. But put it on a candlestick. Yes. And, and give it light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine that before men that they may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Huh? The light within each of us. Yes. Come on, there's a light there. Yes, sir. Amen. The light is the light of Jesus Christ that lives within yours and my heart this morning. The anointing of the Holy Spirit and the very presence of God, presence of God must, within must shine forth from us into a dark and dying world that we're living in today. Yes. Lord, may we burn brightly and let that all might see Jesus in us yeah. and come to Him. Yeah. Oh, how often are lamps today without light? Because we are too self-centered to care about the lost and too caught up in the cares of the life be concerned with the destiny of our eternal soul. I think about Brother Tony giving honor to her honor is glad to see Sister Sandy here this morning and she's always handed out tracts. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. If it's just a tract, give it to somebody. Yeah. Come on church, we are the light yeah. of the world. Amen. And I believe God has ordained us to open up this church. Amen. To get the power and the anointing back into this community. Amen. That once was here before. And it's not going to just take me. It's going to take the body of Christ to do what God has to do. We can't be relaxed now, church. we got to get on fire. Amen. Now's the time to do it. Huh? You say, oh, Pastor, what, what part do I play? you got a big part. Each and every one of you. Yep. Amen. How often do those in darkness of sin look upon us, watch us, and see nothing different about us? Huh? How often does people that's living in sin look at us and see no difference? No wonder they don't want to come to church. Huh? Because our lights are going out. How often do we let our light be hid or snuffed out by hidden or er error reverence for the presence of God? I'm reminded of the parable of the ten virgins found in Matthew. I'm not going to read that. 25, 1 through 12. Five were wise. 
and kept their lamps all trimmed, and they kept them burning. They brought more oil than what was in their lamps, and they kept their lamps full. Yes. The other five were foolish. Yes. Huh? I love you this morning. That almost shows me the church world, 50% are wise and 50% are foolish. That's all right, I got one. Amen. Amen. I say church world. All the churches today, it might even be higher with the foolish. They did not plan well. The five did not plan well. Did not attend their tend to their lamps. And they were left out of the marriage supper. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Church, we cannot afford to be lamps without light. Yes. Or we will not be at the marriage supper of the Lamb mm -hmm. as part of the bride of Christ. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Stay close to God and stay full of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Those five foolish virgins could not get oil from their peers. I can't give you my anointing. Man. Huh? Man. They can't even went to the friends and give us oil. Yeah. Give me what you got. <laughs> Brother Benito, I can't give you what I got. Brother, you can't give me what you got. Right. Amen. Come on, church. The presence of God was here because of here those five fools could not get because they could not enter into the marriage feast on the work that they performed. Come on. The preparation, commitment, the dedication of others. And neither can we. All right. Well, if I pick up the trash and take care and clean the church, I'm going to go to heaven. No, you're not. Works alone. Come on, church. Because of Eli's failure, Israel had no open vision. Yeah. The presence of God was gone. Yeah. And no prophet spoke in Israel for a long time. You wonder why the Bible was silent? Because the presence of God was gone. Yeah. God had forsaken Israel. God ceased to dwell in the uh, ceased to dwell in the Holy of Holies. The Shekinah glory of God that rested upon the mercy seat of, of the ark was no longer there. Sin was present. And darkness prevailed because the light was gone out. Here's what I heard my brother say. God had written the word Ichabod. I heard him say it sitting over there. And I just heard it now. Across the veil, meaning, meaning that glory had departed. Church, look at me. There is a lot of churches today and people. You better be careful. God will write Ichabod above you. Because you allowed the glory of God to leave. Yeah. I don't want him to leave. No. I want more of him. I want everything that he has. Yeah. I want to see, brother, healings. I want to see deliverances. Yeah. I want to see souls saved. Yeah. I want to see people get out of wheelchairs. I want to see crutches hanging on the wall. I want to see cords fall off pacing. Why? Because he should say, I am the same yeah. yesterday and today and forevermore. Yeah. He can do it. But we got to keep this lamp lit. Keep it burning. In the fourth chapter of 1 Samuel, we read that, that the final judgment was against both Hophni and Phineas for their hypocrisy. They were 
with the Ark of the Covenant as it was carried into the battle against the Philistines. And the Bible says that they were killed. The Ark was captured and taken away as a spoil of war to the camp of the Philistines. Phineas, his wife, bore a son, and it says in 1 Samuel 4.21, and she named the child Ichabod saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of, of God was taken because of her father-in-law and her husband. <laughs> huh? In other words, they let the light go out. Yeah. Come on, church. I want you to know that Satan is not satisfied with just opposing you Come on. or making you grow cold. <laughs> He is out to utterly destroy you. Both body and soul. And hell for all eternity. He knows that if we have, uh, have contempt for the things of God, that God will have no choice but to condemn us and judge us for sin. See, the devil knows that. That's why he can creep in. Huh? He'll creep in. Come on. I preached a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago, I'm not sure. Don't stir up the gift that's inside you. You may only you may look at yourself and say, I don't feel no fire there. But if you just roll those ashes over a little bit. I built many a campfires. If you just roll those ashes over a little bit, there's going to be some hot cold brother covered underneath there. And you allow the Holy Spirit to start blowing up on those hot coals, and that fire will start burning up back inside of you. You'll get your shout back in. Brother, if you feel like running, you run. If you feel like shout, you shout. Amen. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, yes. Amen. Act crazy. Act peculiar because we're supposed to be. Huh? I worked in a glass factory and I used to sit there the glass would come up and I'd light it up and hit a button and then put that silk screen across it for your, on your windshield. And I'd be singing away. And they'd be looking in the window at me and just staring. And I got an intercom and I'd say, oh, something matter? I thought maybe a piece of glass broke up by me. they go, no, we're just watching you. You're acting peculiar. And I said, thank you. <laughs> because I said, I am peculiar because God said to be peculiar. Yeah. I'm on church. Hey Amen. I may, I, I don't dance with. I still dance by the dance with a new partner today. Yeah, there you go. I may still sing, but I sing a new song today. Amen. Come on, church. Why? Because I'm not going to let my light go out if my brother don't go. It's not going to hit me. Paul, oh, I got clothes. Sing. Who give me five more minutes? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. There you go. I got twenty minutes. Twenty-five. <laughs> Twenty-five. Thank you. Oh Lord, God promises. God's promises are conditional. Yes, they are. God had promised that the tribe in the house of Levi would serve as priest perpetually. The sin of Eli and his sons negated that promise and the house of Eli lost its place in God's work. God will honor those who honor Him but will judge those who despise Him. Huh? Well, Pastor, why am I not feeling the presence of God like I used to? Get back down on those scarred knees and start praying to God. Yeah. Restore unto me that joy. Restore unto me, dear Lord, what I used to have. Amen. Well, I can't give it to you, church. But I can tell you, you get that light in the burden again, and the presence of God will be there. And you, yeah. amen, come on, amen, and you'll start doing things that you didn't think you could do for the Lord. Come 
we read in 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 through 9 about the call of God that is placed upon a young priest yeah. named Samuel yeah. to be the next judge and the prophet of Israel. Samuel did all he could to bring Israel back into right relationship with God. He did the right things and led Israel to repentance. Samuel was appointed to anoint the first king of Israel, King Saul. He didn't agree with even getting a king, but did it anyhow because God gave him the okay. Yeah. Israel would rather be would rather put their trust in an earthly king. Oh, they tend to like the world today. Yeah. Don't put your trust in the bank. Don't put your trust in the government. Come on. Yeah. Don't put your trust in the president. Yeah. Pray for them. Yeah. God used Samuel greatly and blessed all of Israel because of him. What happened to the unrepentant sons of Eli? They were killed in battle at the same time. And Eli, when he heard of their death, was 98 years old. Lazy, blind, fat, and was sitting in a chair by the gate that fell over backwards and broke his back. That's what the Word said. Eli, the once great high priest of Israel who judged over Israel for 40 years, died in a most unusual manner. He had lost his life and his right standing with God. But most of all, he had lost his sons and probably his own soul for all eternity. He had led all of Israel down the path of defeat and caused the glory of God to leave the tabernacle. I will stop right there. I don't want God to leave this place. Amen. I want you, when you come in, you bring the Spirit of God with you. You bring the anointing with you. You bring everything with you. And when we come in together as a body of Christ, oh, hallelujah! hallelujah. We will see God move. Amen. <laughs> he probably lost everything. What a terrible thing to read on your headstone. Ichabod. Glory had departed. Huh? May God have mercy on the unfaithful preachers. Parents, leaders, or teachers who have led men and women into the very pits of hell. I can't begin to imagine the horror of facing the great white throne judgment with the blood of the lost souls on my hands. I can't see that. That's why we're preaching the truth, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Amen. I love you this morning, but I'm concerned about the souls. Yeah. I'm concerned about souls. I'm concerned about lamps. The lights are going out. May God have Mercy. How indescribable will the pain, the agony, and the sorrow for all eternity of those who did not speak the truth. Huh? And live the truth, but, but led others astray through their own sin and self sinfulness <coughs> As I close, we must keep the light of God burning brightly. Within within lest we also fall into this condition. We must never fail to live the, to live the truth and speak the truth to those around us. I like what Brother Tom Wells said. He said, don't believe what you hear. Just watch me. And let my life show you who I belong to. Yeah. Come on. Don't go about rumors. Church, those are rumors. But well, watch my life. Follow who I follow. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. We, must be, we must not become lamps without lights. Amen. As I close, stay full of the Holy Spirit. Let your light shine and others may see Christ in you. Yeah. Listen. For the voice of God. For He is calling you to be a witness for Him. Time is too short to get lazy. Come on. 
and lacks concerning the house of God and the call of God upon our lives. What about you? Have you been found guilty of being unconcerned as you should be about the things of God or the or for lost souls? Think about that. I can answer for you. I can't. You've got to answer yourself. Have you allowed the secret presence of God and His ways of righteousness become too commonplace? Turn to God in repentance. Amen. Look to the cross of Christ. God is looking for those who will honor Him. Amen. Uh -huh. I can't give you anything. I can't give you anything this morning. But I can encourage you to keep that lamp inside you burning. Keep that lamp burning. Because if not, we will fall into the same condemnation that Eli and his two sons did and be lost for eternity. I don't want to play church as I said this morning. I'm tired of playing church. Amen. Either we get in or we get out. Amen. Either we sell out to God and do what God wants us to call. call. You're not going to answer to me. Nope. You're going to answer to God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to answer to God for what I preach behind the pulpit and what I do. And how am I like to shine? Yes. The longer that when people see me, when people walk by me in the store, they feel the anointing. They feel something. I'm not ashamed to pray for somebody in Walmart. Many times, Sister Angela, I've done that many a different times. Ran into somebody and they're aching or something going on. We'll stop and pray. I don't care who's around. I love it when the waitress at a restaurant will see us or hear us praying. They stop and they wait till we're done. That means they have a little bit of reverence. Yeah. Because we pray over our food, we thank the Lord for it. And I'm not quiet when I pray here. No. I let the, I, I let the restaurant know I'm a child of the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords. Amen. He said, if you'll be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Resistance singers, come back quickly. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I don't want you to leave here this morning. Without the blood of Jesus Christ. Apply it to your life. I believe as I look around and everybody here should be praying for is praying. Thank you, Jesus. But maybe you've not laxed on your duty for God. Now is the time to pick it up. Now is the point of time to get back on fire for God. Even if you got a little flicker, fill that oil back up with the Holy Spirit. And let that light bright shine brighter in you. As we sing this little song, I'm going to invite the altars are open. I want you to come and find your place around the altar. Whether your light, light is dim or it's bright, it doesn't matter. Come. And let's pray around the altars. The church world today is taking the altars out. We need the altars back in. We'll pray with you. I'll pray with you this morning. Because I love you this morning. <clears throat> and don't be like Eli. And his sons thinking that just going to church is going to get you into heaven. But if that lamp is out, 
You're doomed for hell. Come into the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only.
Oh,